Good evening. Is Good evening, it Dr. Warford? Yes, that's me. All right. Well, I have to apologize because I'm pretty sure I've referred to you as Mr. Warford in, okay. in documents. So, um, can you state your full name and spell your last name for the record? Yes, John Warford, W-A-R-F-O-R-D. And Dr. Warford, were you in the room earlier when I went through the penalties yes, for perjury? And do you understand what perjury is? Yes, I do. And being advised of the potential penalties for perjury, do you yes, promise to tell the truth in this case today? Yes, I, I will tell the truth. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Bakke. Did you want me to meet, wait for Commissioner Chrisman? Or? I'm going to make the executive decision. He can review the recording. Well, let's move forward. Okay. Thank you for asking. Okay. Um, Dr. Warford, uh, could you tell the um, PSC commissioners a bit about your background, specifically relating to uh, your relationship with the city of Bismarck? Sure, uh, thank you. Uh, I moved to Bismarck, my wife and I moved to Bismarck in 1973. I established Warford Orthodontics. Um, I'm proud to say that uh, this September 18th will be my 50th year in practice here in Bismarck. I uh, bought cattle in uh, 1976, uh, got into the cattle business, bought the ranch in uh, 1980. That's the, the property that is that has been uh, uh, affected by the pipeline. Uh, in 2002, I was elected mayor of Bismarck. I served three terms. The mayor of Bismarck, of course, uh, uh, sits on the uh, Burley County Planning Commission, sits on the Bismarck City uh, Planning Commission, also on the Metropolitan uh, Planning Organization, which is mostly transportation. Uh, after, instead of running for my uh, fourth term, I was persuaded uh, to... Uh, I'll be the Dean of the Gary Thorlson School of Business out of the University of Mary. I was there for four years. I'm currently on the State Board of Higher Education, and last week I was elected uh, the Vice Chair. And, and how many years did you serve as the Bismarck Mayor? Uh, Twelve years. Okay. And uh, as the Mayor, were you involved in development issues relating to the City of Bismarck? Yes, uh, the Mayor is very uh, yeah, closely uh, related, related to and uh, interested in the development issues. I talked about the Burley County planning, uh, the Bismarck City planning. I had two initiatives, uh, uh, Mayor's uh, uh, Economic Development Advisory Group, uh, a Mayor's planning group, both visionary groups for the city of Bismarck. Oh, one was in 03, the other was in 2011. I developed a strategic plan for the city of Bismarck. Um, and. Uh, so I was closely involved with, with the city, the growth of the city. Uh, the Bismarck has been having extraordinary growth um, over the years. Uh, uh, Bismarck uh, has, uh, was the only small metro area in the United States in 2008 or 2009 not to go into recession. So we've got a trajectory of growth uh, that's uh, been really unprecedented and really not predicted. And, and during the time that you were the mayor, uh, was the area of growth um, in, in the north and in the east? Yes, it was. It's been stated, uh, you know, uh, quite often um, all day today that it's uh, north and northeast. Um, and, and let's uh, talk about the, the land that you own where a Summit uh, has requested an easement on your property. And to be clear, you, you have not granted an easement to... Summit, correct? I have not granted an easement. Uh, the land is uh, in uh, 14079, the west uh, west half of 27. That was the original uh, route. And then when they uh, did the second route, the uh, west half of 29 was added in 14079. Uh, this is a ranch property. I'll just be very brief. I, I bought the property for a family property. I was in the cattle business. Uh, my cattle were up in Williston. I wanted to establish a cattle facility uh, uh, here uh, close to Bismarck. I, Jenny and I have four kids. I wanted to have my kids be uh, raised in the agrarian lifestyle, and they talk about that forever. Uh, it's a beautiful property. Uh, uh, Commissioner Chrisman will be uh, interested to know I bought the property because it has no leafy spurge on it, and uh, I get two more inches of rain there than St. Anthony, and so uh, I thought it would be a good buy, and it has turned out to be a good buy. So it was a functioning cattle ranch. We ran 250 cows up until my second year as being mayor. Uh, I just couldn't handle it with uh, orthodontic practice, uh, four kids, uh, and, and the ranch, so at that time, 
I sold the cows and I've been renting it out ever since. So I rent out the grass and I rent out the uh, hay as well. Okay. Um, and one of the factors that's supposed to be considered in, in relation to the criteria for the pipeline is, is whether the property involved has any particular uh, scenic or historical value. Can you yeah, it's a beautiful property. Uh, I bought, I'm actually the second owner of the property. Um, it, I bought it from the Solberg family. Uh, it has Solberg Butte on it, uh, one of the four buttes up in uh, northern Numberly County. Uh, I am a, a steward of the land, I've planted a lot of trees, I've uh, developed uh, many, many uh, areas of water, no herbicides, no, no pesticides, uh, got a lot of wildlife there. The family enjoys it. I, 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 it is a sustainable property. Property, and uh, I'm very proud of how I've taken care of it in the native grasses on the property. And then can you turn to exhibit um, W143 in the binder there? Yes. That shows the uh, routing of, of the pipeline. It's a little bit misleading. It shows that it's just going over um, a 160s of my property, but it actually goes over a uh, I own uh, 320 acres there. Okay. And so is the, um, if we look on, on that map, 143 in the lower right, where it has your name, um, well, it actually has uh, John H. Warford Jr., revocable trust. That's your son, correct? Nope, that's me. I'm actually, uh, I'm John Warford Jr. My son is John the Third. Okay. <clears throat> we just... Quickly, I know we're really short of time, but when he joined the practice, we thought it wouldn't look really great to have uh, John Warford Jr. being, uh, you know, me, and uh, you know, uh, you know, walking in the room. So we thought we're going to make me John Warford Senior, and he's Junior, but legally, I'm Junior. <laughs> okay, um, and so no, you didn't even know that, did you? <laughs> no, um, no, I didn't. Um, so in the lower right. And in the upper left on uh, 143, that shows the, the land that you own that uh, Summit is proposing to in, uh, in construct the pipeline. That's correct. Okay. And then could you turn to uh, exhibit um, 193? 190? 193. 193. It's another map. Yes. I have it before me. Okay, and does that show uh, the land we just talked about uh, where the summit pipeline is proposed to go and it's now drawn in, in a Sharpie, but it also so shows some of the other sections of land around you? That's correct. Okay, uh, and does that show uh, the distance from where the pipeline is from the uh, Naughton School? Yes, it does. It shows, and it was actually went out yesterday uh, Put it on the odometer of the pickup, and it's 1.5 miles. Incidentally, not in school is where my uh, I, my wife, excuse me, my son, daughter-in-law, and uh, four grandchildren live on the property. You'll see that's the other arrow there at 1.1 miles from the uh, pipeline. Uh, three of the kids' uh, grandchildren go to not in school. Not in school is a Burley County school established, and it's been functioning since 1886. And how many students and staff are there presently at uh, the Naughton Public School? Uh, I asked my daughter-in-law, she said uh, 25 kids that are like K through, I think, 7 or 8. Uh, they have four preschoolers, uh, three uh, teachers, two para-teachers, and a principal that are there. And so uh, your son and daughter-in-law and their children live a mile away from the proposed route of the summit pipeline. That's correct. And the school's uh, within 1.5 miles of the pipeline. That's correct. Okay. Is, is that concerning to you from a safety standpoint? Absolutely. We've heard uh, you know, uh, quite extensively today about the safety and all the other concerns, and I share all those concerns. Okay. Um, have you ever um, offered this property for sale or been interested in selling this property? At no, any I have no interest in selling the property. Okay. So let, let's talk about the contacts that you've had uh, with Summit. Um, and let's start with uh, Exhibit 100. That's a letter to you um, and your wife dated September 13, uh, 2021. That's correct. Okay. 
Um, it was my so, first contact. Okay. Um, and so uh, maybe to kind of speed this up, could you tell us about that first con contact by Summit? Sure. Yeah, that was the first iteration September at that of time. 2021, and then kind of bring us forward from there. Okay, that was the first iteration there uh, at that time. And you may note, note at the top, um, I, I, I called in and spoke to uh, a Rick Johnson at that time. And um, I told him that I was not interested in any participation uh, with uh, the, the pipeline uh, at all. And at that time, I um, uh, hired a legal attorney to uh, give me some recommendations. Just going off the top of my head, then I think in April of uh, uh, of 22, I received the information uh, from was it Jamie DeMeo, I think, um, with regard to a proposal for the easement and a proposal of money, a, a dollar amount. Okay. And is that what's uh, been marked as Exhibit 101? Yes, that's correct. Okay. That's April 2nd, 2002, and that's when you received the proposed easement? That's correct. Okay. And so what did you do in, in response to that easement? I had my attorney write a letter that I was not interested, not interested in participating, and at that time to um, uh, communicate with my attorney rather than to just send me letters. And what were they proposing uh, in terms of pay for the easement for your property? And incidentally, how, how, how uh, much of an area would they be taking from your property? It was across a half mile. Okay. So at an angle, it's a little more of okay. whatever the uh, linear distance is. But it was the usual things that uh, you know, the other people testified to, to today uh, with all of the, um, I think it was essentially the boilerplate from their proposals, but it was somewhere around $19,000 to go across that uh, that property for the perpetual, uh, uh, I guess it's not perpetual, but to me it is a 99-year lease. Okay. And was it a distance of uh, 1.5 miles and 7.466 total acres that they were wanting to take from you? Yeah, I think uh, the 1.5 miles might be a little long because it's just right, kind of at an angle across a half section, so... It's, it's, yeah. and, and there's a, um, a map attached uh, if we look at uh, what's labeled as Exhibit B, Preliminary Route. And we saw it also on Exhibit uh, 143. It essentially cuts across um, portions of the middle of your property and then the upper third um, on Exhibit 143 on the parcel to the uh, left-hand side, correct? Yes. And, and how would the, that affect the use and, and the value of your land, in your opinion? Well, as we've heard and had extensive testimony, in, in my opinion, uh, equals what everybody else has said, and that is, is that the, uh, the, the property will be devalued by having the, uh, the hazardous pipeline on my property. Um, let's talk about, the, in addition to the, the written communications you've had with Summit, have you had some meetings directly with summit representatives yes, I've had, about the proposed uh, summit pipeline? Yes, I think I've had uh, rather extensive meetings uh, with, with summit. Um, I've had uh, two uh, meetings with uh, Dave Nering. Um, I'd known Dave for, for quite a while. He identified me as a landowner representative, that he was going to represent the landowners uh, with regard to uh, negotiations with Summit. So that was the summer. So we remember I got the letter in uh, April of 22, uh, which I said no. Uh, and I met with him up City Brew here in Bismarck, had a, had a cup of coffee, and just we just, kinda, we just kind of talked in general. But I told him philosophically, Dave, where I'm coming from, and that is, and I know point one, and I've been consistent on this, uh, commissioners, since day one. Uh, my, my first point, eminent domain, I know that's not here, but I was uh, opposed to the taking of the land. 
Uh, number two, the safety issues uh, with regard to uh, the, the pipeline. And the third issue uh, was, was regarding, I introduced at that time, uh, that I felt that my land, I was certainly not interested in having my land taken, and, uh, but also that this land um, was too close to Bismarck. And I just uh, outlined to Dave at that time. Okay. That's what, what that was. And then subsequent to your uh, meetings with Dave Nairing of Summit, did, did you have um, other face-to-face -face meetings with Summit representatives? Yes, yes I did. Actually, um, at that time, I think that's when they did the, the alteration, the big alteration of the line. And I met in the fall of uh, 22 with Dave, and uh, um, he, he asked for a meeting. He said he had new information for me, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll meet with you. And we met at the City of Peru again. He showed me on his phone, he didn't have any real detailed maps, but he showed me on the phone, um, which um, alarmed me considerably, because now uh, the, uh, the pipeline not only went through a half mile of Section 27, the first time, but it now went through another half mile on Section 29. And so now I am faced with one mile of my property uh, being affected. And I, I shared with him that, uh, that, Dave, this is certainly unacceptable. Take this back to your, to your folks. And that um, unless this uh, uh, pipeline is taken off my land um, or uh, it's significantly rerouted, uh, we don't have anything to talk about. Okay. And, and then after meeting with uh, Mr. Nearing, did you meet... Um face-to-face -face with some other summit representatives? Yes, I have. I've had a meeting, and I don't necessarily have to elaborate on all of them, but I wrote them down. December 22, I had a meeting um, actually at your office, and at that meeting was uh, Commissioner Bittner, Mayor Schmitz, um, uh, Wade Boshans, um, and I think Jeff Scari was at that meeting. I had a meeting December 27th. And meeting January 17th, 2023, uh, with uh, Jimmy Powell, uh, Bruce Rastetter, um, Wade Boshans, and Jeff Scarry were there. And then the one that uh, 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 Mr. Walker uh, alluded to on May 15th, uh, 2023. And I re emphasize that at all of those meetings, I made it very clear that, first of all, I was not really interested in meeting to hear about Summit or the economic advantages or anything like that. I was interested in my three points, which I talked about, but especially uh, moving this route um, away from Bismarck because of the, uh, the barrier effect and the effect on the long-term uh, economic health of the community. So at, at each of those four meetings uh, was the topic of discussion that you brought up and what, what was discussed with Summit was um, moving the pipeline route further away from Bismarck. That's correct. Okay. Um, Mr. Powell testified before the PSC on March 14 um, that you never raised that topic on the meeting you had with him with Mr. Rastetter and Mr. Powell here in Bismarck on January 17, uh, 23. Would I understand from your testimony that, that what Mr. Powell testified to is false? That's false and not accurate. And, and then let's turn to um, the, the meetings where you met on December uh, 27 and January 17. Uh, at each of those meeting with the summit representatives, did they suggest to you uh, that they were looking into an alternative route around Bismarck? Yes, they led me to believe that. Okay. And then finally you had the meeting on uh, May 15, um, 2023, and that was with Mr. Walker, Mr. Molder, Moldenauer, and you. Yes. And the representatives of Summit that were there were whom? Yeah, Wade Boshans was there, Jimmy was there, and then, I didn't get his last name, but Lee. Uh, Lee somebody. I, I don't know what his last name was. And that was over at uh, Summit's office uh, on the east side of Bismarck. Okay. And out of the three of them, did Mr. Powell be, seem to be the one that had, was the highest up and had the most authority for Summit? 
Yes. Yeah, he's the COO, I think. Yeah, it was interesting at that meeting. That was where we first heard because, you know, we had, had followed the testimony uh, down at Emmons where he said that he was going to look at the southern route. And then Bismarck Tribune said that they were going to look at the southern route. And then uh, Jimmy said that we're, we're just not going to do it. Uh, told us at that meeting. They did lead us to think, uh, the three of us, Chad, Chad, and myself, did lead us to think that, um, that they were going to uh, rework the northern route and to take a look at moving it out a little farther. And they have this computer images and things that they have over at uh, the summit office where they can pr project a map up and they can project some things there. Uh, and did he tell you, as Mr. Walker testified uh, to, that, that uh, Mr. Powell said they would need to talk to their board of directors about moving the route to a location further outside of Bismarck at their board meeting the following week? Yes, yeah, so it was the next Tuesday. Yes. And did Mr. Powell tell you that he would get back to you about uh, the results of that board meeting about moving the pipeline? Yes, he did. And did he tell you that he would get back to you uh, shortly after that meeting took place uh, a week later, which would be roughly uh, May 23, 2023? Well, I, uh, you know, I was led to believe there's a sense of urgency, you know, on their part. They're, they're wanting to meet, and there's a sense of urgen urgency, and I think we've all heard that there is a sense of urgency on their part to uh, get the permit and uh, get, uh, you know, things done before these hearings so that they can, they can move on. So, uh, did, did Mr. Powell ever get back to you um, about um, what the board of directors decided and, and what they were willing to do to move the route after the May 15. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. It has to do with our customer service, no offense, but uh, last week when it was Memorial Day weekend, we had, uh, had our family reunion in Minneapolis and I get a picture from FedEx, my back door, with a plastic bag and a FedEx envelope hanging on my back door. And uh, it, it came from some outfit down in Texas. And I, I told my wife, what did you buy this time? <laughs> and uh, um, so we get home on Sunday night. This is Sunday night, Memorial Day is the next day. And I open this up and it's a letter from uh, Jamie DeMeo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it again. Uh, stating that uh, someone's going to survey my land. Um, and then they talk about the Judge Naram decision and all of this. Uh, the interesting part is, is that it was hanging on my door at 11.26 in the morning on Friday. I, I get the envelope uh, Sunday afternoon, and it's that Sunday. It says from Sunday to June 30th that they're going to access my land. They warned me. And they sent it Friday afternoon, and they were going to come out on as soon as Memorial Day to? Two days later. And is that what's been marked as Exhibit uh, 187? That's correct. That's the letter that was in the uh, FedEx? That's correct, yeah. And did you ever give them permission uh, to conduct a survey on your property? No, that was actually the second time. So, uh, July 11th of 22, Jamie sent me a letter wanting to survey, survey and I said no. This was the second request. And um, I can't pull it up uh, on my, my phone, but I did ask um, uh, uh, that uh, you craft a letter for me, which I sent to Wade and to, to Jeff Scarry, to Wade Boshans and Jeff Scarry, um, that I have concerns about this, the timing of it. I thought that it was inappropriate. Uh, I thought that I would like to have this, uh, the, this forcing the survey on my land you know, investigate it a little bit more further, whether or not this judge's decision is in Burley County. I just wanted some more time, and I asked some questions, and I have not heard back since then. Okay. And is that the uh, email that you sent, which is Exhibit 188? That's correct. Um, and that was sent by you on uh, May 30, so the day after uh, Memorial Day, um, and sent to Mr. Boysand and to Mr. Scari. An interesting sidebar to this, uh, commissioners, um, the saga gets a little thicker, and that is is that a neighbor called me here while I'm at this meeting and said that uh, the summit uh, survey crew pickups are uh, one mile west of your property. It looks like they're heading out to your property. So I'm sitting in here, um, you know, 
waiting to testify and I've got and you know the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing uh, summit is out uh, and I don't know if they accessed or trespassed on the land or you know th the status of that but that's alarming to me as a citizen I, you know I was uh, involved with city government for 12 years and you know you know process and policy is just not being adhered to and I, I feel offended about that Now, um, let, let's talk about the, the property where they're proposing to take this easement from you. Um, in, in terms of the, the value of this uh, property, you talked about Solberg Butte, and that's one of the few buttes north of, of town that has some significant elevation. Yeah, across northern Burley County, there's Burnt Butte, Kiever Butte, which has got the big antenna north of the gun club, Solberg Butte, and then Sibley Butte uh, north of... Uh, we don't, uh, we don't, can I think? Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, oh, so is that some the place that you and your family go to is the top of Solberg Butte? Absolutely. My kids have a camping site up there. Okay. And what can you see from there? Well, I can see Emmons County. Uh, I can see um, nearly down to St. Anthony. I can see I-94. I can see the state capitol. Um, and, uh, you know, the view is magnificent. Um, and then in terms of uh, your property, do you have any native grasses on that property? Absolutely. Oh, my favorite grass is uh, big blue stem, and I've got quite a bit of it on there. And I try to nurture that grass. You know what big blue stem is? It's a great grass to have. Um, it, it's, it shows that you're taking care of the land. By the way, uh, Commissioner, I'm doing a lot of NDSUs. Um, we're, we're talking a little ranch talk here. I'm doing a little bit of NDSUs plan grazing, the cell grazing, and it really works. Yeah, or increased our carrying capacity significantly. Um, and then uh, in terms of the, uh, that property and the value of that land, why don't we turn to Exhibit 193? Uh, that's the, the map we looked at before. Do you have that uh, available to you? Uh, getting it up here, sorry. I'll have to go off the top of my head. Okay. Is that the is that the full map? That's that's the map that, that shows the, the line yeah, on it. You got should it. have yeah. that in your your have it memorized. Okay. And there there's a uh, subdivision, a, a, a few existing subdivisions uh, directly south of your land, Country Hills second subdivision and Country Creek subdivisions and Skyline States uh, which are Roughly a little over a, a mile or so away from the proposed pipeline uh, going through your land, um, those are established subdivisions. Is that your understanding? That's uh, just south of uh, that section 29, about a mile. Is, I think they call it Heritage Heights. Um, that's a, a Mariner uh, subdivision. That land uh, sold for 25,000 an acre. Uh, the land in between uh, my my half sections, section 27 and section 29, uh, my neighbors, um, I think it's JR land, uh, they value their land at 30,000 an acre. And uh, switching topics, um, one of the exhibits we submitted was exhibit 116 was a letter uh, from yourself and former mayors uh, Steve Bakken and, and Hawk Hawkinson um, requesting the pipeline to be moved and indicating that the proposed pipeline route is in the direct path of development of, of Bismarck. How did that letter come about? I thought it would be interesting for the commission to hear what former mayors thought. And so I contacted those two mayors, the other, uh, the other two mayors uh, that were, um, you know, uh, prior to this time, uh, I could not get hold of them, but I got hold of Mayor Hawk Hawkinson, uh, uh, you know, quite a uh, colorful character um, as mayor of the city of Bismarck. And I, I took that map over that has the 911 points on it that the county generated. He, t he looked at that for five seconds and said, I'm in. 
uh, what, what can I sign? Th this is in the wrong site for the city of Bismarck. Um, also, uh, uh, Steve Bakken, uh, Mayor Steve Bakken, um, he is um, uh, signed the letter as well. And I, I, I didn't ask Mayor Schmitz to sign the letter, but you know he voted uh, for. Uh, he sits, as you know, the mayor sits on the Burley County Planning Commission. He voted uh, one of the nine zero votes for Burley County Planning. Um, and uh, he, he was one of the uh, unanimous votes on the Bismarck City Commission uh, for their resolution on the pipeline. So I felt that he kind of signed the letter, but he really didn't. Okay. Um, and, and then in terms of the economic impact, not, not only to you, but to other d um, individuals with property, which is in the, the path of development uh, and is uh, close to the extraterritorial limits where this pipeline is proposed to go, uh, do you think if that pipeline went in there it would have a significant economic impact on development in that area? You know, I, um, you, you know if you look at, uh, in Burley County, uh, you heard earlier there are 1,247 on, on dots or 911 spots. Um, uh, in Burley County within two miles of this proposed pipeline and you know you know you, you've heard extensive testimony these are people who have their dreams their retirement dreams there these are their major investment these are homes if you, you just take a look at my, my son's home uh, we look at that as kind of our, our family home and you know Jenny and I we have four kids we have 15 grandchildren you know that's our family family home there and if you translate these 1,247, that's 12, not 1,247 people. These are 1,247 homes. I feel sorry for those people. And I can see why the citizens of Bismarck, why the citizens of Burley County are rising up. This just does not make sense to have them uh, impacted like this. Their, their lifelong dreams have those dreams taken away. And, and someone might say uh, that, that you're involved in an intervener in this matter because you're personally affected. Is that your motivation for becoming an intervener in this action is yeah. just because you're a property mm -hmm. owner? Well, there's just uh, no doubt I'm personally affected. I will say that. But I, you know, those of the, you that know me, they're, those of the, you that don't know me, you'll know my reputation. I'm an altruistic person. I did not sit, uh, leave my, my wife alone for 300 city commission meetings. <laughs> Um, most with public hearings, and I very much appreciate, you know, the fact your attentiveness actually at this time of night um, for public hearings. Um, you, you get an affinity, uh, you know, for the citizens that you represent, you know, the health and the safety of your citizens. And I deeply feel that. This, this is from the bottom of my heart. Uh, my community is being affected by this. This is my community. And uh, I, 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 I want this, this pipeline moved so that our community is safe, so that the economic future of this community is not uh, a detriment, and that the citizens right now, it's a rural residential area, it's there right now, as somebody previously said. So, yes, I'm going on and on, but you get the point. I have no further questions. Thank you. Great. Um, Mr. Mulberg, are you asking questions? I'm just going to note for the record that I exceeded my my uh, best time so far in the year. <laughs> 32 minutes. Greatly appreciated. <laughs> so noted. <laughs> well, you had a good witness to work with, too. I won't let you take all the credit. Yeah, I, I, I tried to be Will Rogers tonight, be brief, be sincere, and then be seated. That's what there I tried to go. do. <laughs> Dr. Warford, I don't have any questions for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Pelham, any questions? Yes, I have a few. Good evening, sir. Yes. Uh, talking about that May 15th meeting, um, approximately how long did that meeting last? It was about an hour. Yep. And who called the meeting again? 
Uh, well, it was. It, it came from uh, approximately a week earlier from uh, a, a group of concerned Bismarck and Burley County citizens met with Senator Hoven and Senator Kramer down at the federal building. And we shared our concerns with the two senators and they, uh, about an hour and a half, and the conclusion of the meeting uh, was uh, Senator Hoven said that I will try to arrange a meeting with some decision makers um, at Summit um, for you to air your grievances with them. So that's how the meeting came about. So then um, Wade Bushans uh, gave me an email. Uh, we came up with a time. Uh, uh, Mr. Wachter's time was accurate. The meeting was originally at 1 o'clock, and Mr. Paul Powell's plane didn't couldn't arrive, so it was at 2 o'clock that day. So it's interesting to me, at least the timeline that was provided. It looks like uh, there's a December 22, 2022 yeah. meetings, two of those, a January 17th, 2023 meeting between you and Summit Carbon Solution representatives, and then about five months later in May. No other meetings between that January 17th, 2023 meeting and the May 15th, 2023? I don't remember. I had been threatened to be sued. No, no news is good news to me. Fair enough. Uh, so the, the meeting took place on the 15th. Um, and I believe you testified, sir. I don't mean to put words in your mouth, so if I'm stating this inaccurately, you were led to believe that there was going to be a route change. What led you to believe that? I made that a requirement with Mr. Boshans. I said, I'm not interested in meeting unless you want to talk. So at the About meeting, movement, then, yes. You left the meeting then, so that was pre-meeting. You left the meeting. What, after leaving the meeting, were you led to believe that the route would change? And what led that? Okay, uh, Mr. Wachter uh, stated that, uh, that I left the meeting being rather happy. I was not happy uh, because I felt that... Um, the, you know, the the fact that it had to go to the board and you know, this was not my first meeting and I kind of heard this before. I thought they were not disingenuous, but just you know trying to get rid of me, so to speak. I believe they were leading you on then. Say again. Do you believe they were leading you on? Yes. In that meeting. Yes, I think I was. Uh, you know. Yeah, they said that, that they were going to talk to the board. I mean, this was the COO going to talk to the board. That's, I, I felt that maybe uh, something would happen. Did they ask you at that meeting in May to do anything or to refrain from doing anything? No. Did they say anything about what they wanted from you at that meeting? No. And no follow-up whatsoever other than the FedEx letter you got. Yes, I got the, got the postcard and the, yeah. And did I hear you, your testimony today is, is that at the meeting today, you believe that there was a survey crew at your property? Yes, one of my neighbors, uh, you, know, uh, he, you know, said he, they were a mile from the place. But that alarmed me. I mean, you know, you've got, pickups driving around and uh, I will state that there are cattle uh, uh, on both of those two half sections right now and they're registered Angus cattle very valuable cattle and you know anecdotally there's the gates left open and we've heard about that and I just you know as a rancher and you as a rancher you know you don't want the gates left open and uh, you know what happens so um, I was concerned Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions Thank you. for you. Mr. Jordy, any questions? Yes, doctor. You had mentioned that uh, someone by the name of Lee was also at this meeting. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Does Lee blank sound familiar? I think that sounds right, yes. Are, are you aware if he's the chief executive officer, the officer, the CEO of Summit Carbon Solutions? He did not identify himself as that. When, when So you've met, assuming it was Lee blank and assuming uh, that he is the CEO, at least that's what their website says, you had met with the CEO, the COO, and Bruce Rastetter, the, the founder, the promoter of the whole business. And so when they said they needed to talk to their board, did you understand their board was anyone other than the three people you'd already talked to? I was led to be, uh, this last meeting, I was led to uh, 
to think that these were the decision makers and I was a little disappointed uh, that uh, they had to go to the board. I did not know all of the dynamics. I haven't looked it up, but I, I, I was disappointed. But did they tell you who the board was, or do you no. think that was just an excuse to pass no. the buck? Back in Iowa, though. Okay. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Mr. Chrisman? Clarify for me. I think we've had it along the way at one of the hearings, but your two parcels of land, how far is that from the city limits? City limits? Well, I can say from the ETA, it's about a mile. So the city limits would be two miles in from the ETA, so maybe three, three miles from the city limits. So is it fair to say from your long service to the city of Bismarck, has Bismarck benefited immensely from the oil and gas industry these last 10, 15 years since that really took off. Absolutely. And has Bismarck benefited greatly from decades of the, of the uh, coal and synthetic natural gas industry up in Minnesota? Absolutely. In I'm a supporter of our, the Bakken, shale oil, all of that. I'm a supporter of the lignite coal. I'm also um, a supporter of utilizing carbon for um, uh, oil recovery. Is just this pipeline, and we've heard it almost ad infinitum here today, why I'm opposed to it, Commissioner. So when you had your meeting where I thought I sensed earlier that you felt some potential optimism of them, not when the discussion was going south of town, but of just moving farther out. Yes. Was your impression at that time that they were talking another mile or two to give more buffer or moving way out into um, other counties? Or what kind of distance okay. farther did you imagine? I was talking miles. You know, I was talking in the neighborhood of the Burley County type of thing, 10 miles. And, you know, it is shared, uh, you know, the Satarsha, you know, plume. And, you know, we went 24 miles. And just, you know, it was kind of interesting where they said, well, how far do you think? And kind of my answer to them was, you know, you have all the engineers, you do the siting, you know where the antiquities are. Why don't you come up with a solution rather than to ask me? I'm not a pipeline expert, but I do know the sort of the economics of the area. And so that's kind of how that went. So now I got to get into where my okay. concern is with really Bismarck and Burley County. Okay position here. Okay. That oil and gas industry has taken off and benefited Bismarck because pipelines were built, because railroads were double tracked, because highways were widened and in, in many cases four laned, because power lines were built to service all the other things I just mentioned. Do you think that all that happened more than 10 miles from other communities, uh, well, city limits or, or territorial, um, extraterritorial boundaries? Uh, Commissioner, uh, infrastructure, whether it be pipelines, um, roads, streets, um, infrastructure that is for the benefit of all, for the community that has an economic benefit for the community, I'm in favor of. But a CO2 pipeline built by a company that's never built a pipeline before, and we heard testimony that, you know, they may have some issues with who they've hired to build it, um, and it is just essentially taking waste CO2 with no economic benefit to our community and putting it over in your county I have a problem with that. That has nothing to do with our economy. In fact, that's a barrier. All the other infrastructure is an advantage. Would you be comfortable with this if it was taking CO2 from 
the North Dakota industries and shipping it elsewhere to be used for something, you know, for greenhouses or things like that, but on this same route? Well, you take the, the, the Blue Flint, was just announced this week, um, and that's what, three mile pipeline? And, uh, you know, they, they said that 71% of the landowners is voluntary. But it's, the, it's a three-mile pipeline just right away from the plant. I'm not sure if you're saying if it would be reversed the other way, would I be happy about that? No, I, I, I wouldn't. I, you know, the CO2 pipeline proximity, first of all, through a rural residential area in the path of growth of the city of Bismarck, um, that's my issue. Thank you for explaining it. Thank you very much. Commissioner Haugen Hoffer? Yeah, a couple questions. Um, what date did uh, the concerned citizens meet with the two senators? Do you remember the date? Can't remember the date, but uh, it would be. Um, I could get it to you. It was about two, it took about two weeks, two weeks to uh, yeah, 10 days to two weeks to make that happen. I'm sorry, I was talking over you. It took, it took me from the senators' meeting, it took maybe 10 days uh, to 14 days uh, before the meeting actually happened. On the 15th? Correct. How many people were there, uh, the group of concerned citizens that met with the... 15 or 20. Filled the downstairs conference room. And where did you meet? The downstairs conference room on the first floor at the federal building in Bismarck. I might add, I'm very grateful for the senators to do that. They were, uh, you know, very good for us. Do you have any follow up with the senators after? Did you leave it like, I know Senator Hovind arranged the meeting on the 15th. Yes. Do you have any plans to meet with the senators after this? I did not. I, I texted uh, both of them. Thank you for the meeting. Okay. No further questions. Thank, Thank you. you so much for, <laughs> you've spent two long days at our hearings. Thank you. And I, but uh, my job was not as hard as what yours is. So thank you. Mr. Dawson, any questions? Every time I have a wonderful question, Commissioner Chrisman beats me to it. So I have no question. Thank you. All right. Any redirect, Mr. Bakke? Uh Just briefly, um, do you see uh, any benefits to North Dakota in having this waste CO2 come from other states to be injected uh, in the ground here? Zero benefit. And you were asked some questions ab about, you know, the benefits that North Dakota has reaped in the oil industry and the infrastructure and the build-out, and there may be locations in western North Dakota where some of this oil and gas infrastructure is, is close to town, and you explain um, your thoughts on that, that that's, that's a, a different situation, including the fact that this CO2 has no value. But, it, but is another significant difference between Western North Dakota and the advantages and benefits we got, that this is CO2 not from the oil fields in Western North Dakota, but this is from ethanol plants, 31 out of 32, which are from other states and provided no benefit to North Dakota because they're out of, plate, out of state ethanol plants. Just my opinion that you know all of this is for green ethanol which is actually the same ethanol. They just get rid of the carbon. And so that can be sold to California. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's, um, it's a little bit mind boggling for me that uh, I'm having to sit before you today. Okay. And just one final question. If you look at exhibit 192, that's an email uh, from Mr. Boy's hand at summit on January 4, uh, addressed to you and to me. And does Mr. Boy's hand indicate um, in, re in regard to the meeting the prior week that the purpose of that meeting on December 27 was in fact to discuss an alternative route around Bismarck because he says, quote, reaching resolution uh, on the route around Bismarck is one of our highest priorities, end quote. That's correct. I received that email. Okay. I have nothing further. Mr. Malberg, any questions? No, thank you. Mr. Pelham? 
Mr. Jordy. Any other commissioner questions? All right. Thank, Thank you, you, doctor. Yep. 